Hey, Team HQ Sports. We got a brand new college football champion, AJ Hinch and Alex Cora. See ya, your goners. And uh, it's almost my favorite Sunday in all of football. I'm your host, Lauren Gambino. Championship Sunday is my favorite Sunday in all of football. It is just days away. And no, the Super Bowl is not my favorite day. Championship Sunday is because it's like you get two Super Bowls in one day. And to be honest, in recent years, that day has been more interesting than Super Bowl Sunday has been, right? We'll get back to those four teams in just a minute. Let me take you through tonight's game. We're going for 15 rounds of sports-only trivia, stopping for prizes after rounds 7, 11, and 15. Of course, if you can hang on for a win to the very end, then the prize and the glory are yours. $1,000 to be exact, that's on the table tonight if you go all in with me and skip those other prizes, of course. All right, we give out points for every question that you answer correctly, but you can earn even more points by picking up a multiplier right now. Points give you those coveted levels and free passes, which make all games easier to win at HQ. So hook yourself up right now. Do yourself a favor. If you're feeling like a winner tonight, make those questions work harder for you. You know who's feeling like a winner tonight? Our four remaining NFL teams. So for our warm-up, I asked on Twitter, at HQ Sports. Actually, Gab asked on Twitter. I'm just taking the credit. Give me your bold predictions for Championship Sunday. Let's see what you got. At D. I hope that's nothing bad, says, get ready for a sea of red as the Chiefs and Niners meet up in Super Bowl 54. Live. Live. In Miami, it's all a little too much want to take a selfie song for me. At Jeff Johnson, I guess that's good for Jimmy G. At Jeff Johnson 17 says, I predict the Packers will get a handful of questionable calls go in their favor. Yes, thank you. I thought I was the only one who thought that. I mean, I am a bitter Cowboys fan who has the 2014 Dez catch ingrained in my memory forever. But seriously, like the refs, Love Rogers. Did you see before last game? They're all like, oh, he's handshaking him and everything. It's collusion. And at the Rec Star says, State Farm Bowl, Rogers and Mahomes, Super Bowl, baby. That's actually kind of genius. Could these cheesy State Farm sports agent commercials all year long really have been foreshadowing something here for us? We may soon find out, and then we will be stuck with way more State Farm commercials, so I hope not. As always, thanks for playing along. Not a whole lot of love for the Titans, eh? Well, for Vrabel's wife's sake, maybe it's for the best. All right, look at that. We are just five seconds away from being five after. It's game time, so get loose, get focused, and let's get in there. Round one starts right now. Where must a basketball player be to potentially make a three-second violation? Hanging from the rim, free throw lane, or bathroom? No, you couldn't see it, but I even did the hand quote around three seconds. Oh, it's both an offensive and defensive violation. Unless you're actively defending, you got to get out of the lane before the count of three. Free throw lane is your answer here, aka the paint, baby. 24,734 of you getting this one right, starting you off nice and easy. 925 of you. Um, I don't know how quickly you use the bathroom, but I think it's hard to get all your business done in three seconds. Round two. Which of these scores does not end an NFL overtime game on the first possession? Touchdown, field goal, or safety? Oh, Gavin talked about this for the show we think that overtime needs an overhaul we don't like it but if the team that takes the ball puts it in either end zone one you know their way for a touchdown or behind them for a safety the game is over right then and there a field goal allows the other team a chance to equal that or to win field goal we don't like it 20,417 of you getting that one right. Gab and I think that it should be an extra quarter, an extra 15 minutes. What do you think? Let me know in the chat right now. Does OT need an overhaul? We want to hear from you. Olympic. Round three. In which event did Chloe Kim win Olympic gold as a teenager? Snowboard, cross, big air, or half pipe? What were you doing at 17 years old? I was not winning a gold medal. I was 
may be sitting in Friday detention after school. But yet, at 17 years old, Chloe Kim was not in detention. No, she was getting big air, but in the half pipe. Take Start a look at this. And now she's the Olympic gold medalist, the 17-year-old from the USA. She is the current Olympic world X Games and youth Olympic gold medalist and the first person to win that title at all of those events. Half pipe was the event we're talking about here when she won gold. 18,896 of you getting that one right. I think 8,000 of you just saw snowboard and panicked and picked that first one. It's all right. Shake it off. You got your free passes. You have your extra lives. Oh, do you have your extra lives? Well, then this is a perfect opportunity to pick some extra lives up. If you don't have them stock up, you're allowed to use multiple per game. And in HQ Sports, you could use them all the way to the very end. So make sure you hook yourself up with, with some extra lives tonight. Let's let's continue with round number four. What player memorably, memorably celebrated after scoring this World Cup winner? Take a look. <laughs> moment we'll remember forever. What player was that celebrating? Was it Mia Hamm, Brandi Chastain, or Michelle Akers? Celebrated and scored. That's what we're looking for, the player that scored. You know, they all celebrated after that. You can't cheat on that one, though, and try to read the jersey because she gets rid of it real quick in her celebration. This clutch goal, though, came via Brandy Chastain. Brandy Chastain is your answer here. 20,924 of you getting that one right. That is quite the celebration. Love seeing it. Um, our recent ladies also had some memorable celebrations. Uh, you might have to do the same if you win this game, but for now, we're only on to round number five. Let's see what you got. Which Astro was named in Major League Baseball's recent report on the sign-stealing scandal? Carlos Beltran, Jose Altuve, or George Springer? Shame, shame, shame. Back in November, this guy lied and said he didn't know anything about sign stealing cameras but robert manfred's new report says the sign stealing was player driven and the only player mentioned was this liar carlos beltran carlos beltran is your answer Eighteen thousand seven hundred and twenty. yeah i'm a little bit bitter cheaters never win but you know what gab they still have that win and that's not fair you can get this win, though, by playing the game the right way. Uh -huh. <laughs> Round six. What well, NBA star played in four different decades? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Vince Carter, or Robert Parrish? Jabbar and the Chief both played to an older age, but Vince started in the 90s. Did the aughts and the tens and is still going in the 20s because it's 2020 right now. Vince Carter is your answer, 18,187 of you getting that one right. Mm-hmm. All right. You know what? Perfect timing for you because you are coming upon our first prize question of the night. I'm going to ask you this question. If you can guess it right, I'm going to be making you an offer with some valuable coins. You can choose to accept or decline. I'll talk more after this. Round seven. What agent negotiated the first Major League Baseball free agent deals for $100 million? Dan Lozano, Scott Morris, or Casey Close? Loza was the first to $300 million as he reps Manny Machado. But Boris had Kevin Brown, who had the first deal for $100 million, and then A-Rod, who crossed the $200 million mark. Scott Boris is the answer here at round seven. 11,932 of you get in this one perfectly correct. So you know what that means. I'm going to make you this offer right now. 135 coins. How about that? Take it right now and be our early winners. It's a nice chunk of change. Or you can choose to decline it and play on to the final prize, or at least to the next prize if you can make it that far. Let's see what our players choose. Ah, 
3,864 of you are our first winners of the night. Congratulations. You're all taking home 135 coins. Congrats. We're going to reset for a sec as we stretch it out for the seventh round stretch. All right. I was being a little bit vicious before and just, you know, throwing the word liar around. But I want to know, do you agree with the Astros' punishment? Yes. You're satisfied? No. You think it should be tougher? That one. Or you think they should have gotten zero punishment? Somebody picks that one. I'm personally picking it. Don't know how to do it, but I'll figure it out. Tougher punishment. Yes. I knew we were all friends here. I say they take the title away. Mm, how about that? Gab is nodding as well. All right, let's move on to round number eight. What woman was the first Grand Slam singles champion from Asia? Naomi Osaka, Kimiko Date, or Nina? She was the first Asian woman to compete in a Grand Slam singles final, and then she was the first to win, taking both the 2011 French and the 2014 Australian she was the first woman from China to win a WTA singles event of any kind. Lina is your answer here at round eight. 6,412 of you, woo, skating by on this one. Almost a TKO as we lose almost 7,500 of you right here. Get back in the game right now. We still got a few questions left until our next prize. Let's see if you could do it. Round nine. What is necessary for a pitcher to score? A Maddox. No errors, no runs, or no hits. Remember this one? Well, I'll tell you, it's named for Greg Maddox, the player who's logged the most of these. This statistic is earned by pitching an entire game with fewer than 100 pitches, very hard to do nowadays, and shutting out the other team, meaning no runs scored. Incredibly hard to do. Oh, and we do have our first TKO of the night. Boom, down and out. I know it's hard to think. No runs, right? In an era where there's just home run hitter after home run hitter. 2,609 of you getting that one right. Actually, Kyle Hendricks threw an 81-pitch Maddox last season. All right, two questions away from our next prize. Here it is, round 10. Which NFL team debuted most recently? Houston Texans, Jacksonville Jaguars, or the Carolina Panthers? It kind of feels like the Texans have been around for forever, but they only came into existence in 2002, and that's later than that both the really Panthers the and the Jaguars. Okay. Houston Texans is your answer here. 6,223 of you got that one right. Um, I have a quick question for you. Do you say Jaguars or Jaguars? Gab and I were having a discussion before the show. <laughs> or Jaguars. Let me know. Until then, we are moving on to our next prize question of the bunch. Jaguars and all. Um, I'm going to make you an offer here if you can get this one right. You know the drill. Round 11. What player captained the U.S. Olympic ice hockey team the greatest number of times? Chris Chelios, Mike Madano, or Brett Hull? Are they being funny, Gab? Gab thinks you're all being funny in the chat. No, With three straight funny. captains runs over 12 years, it's the ageless Chris Chelios who played in the NHL until, until he was 48 years old. Chris Chelios is the answer. Ooh, Gab, I need to call it. It's a TKO here at our prize question 11. 2,129 of you bobbed out of that severe crippling hit right there. So I'm going to make you an offer of 705 coins. You could choose to take it and be an early winner or play on. And don't fret. I see 3, 000, over 3,200 of you jumping back in the game using those extra lives. You know what? Just rub some dirt in it. The pain goes away, but you can keep playing. 922 players are choosing to take that prize of 705 coins. Congratulations. You're our second winners of the night. Jaguars! is the answer in the chat. I love it. Wars of Jags. 
Round 12. Which of these was not once the name of an NHL division? Patrick, Hart, or Morris? I feel like you have to have a certain level of income to say Jaguar. Like, you have to be very, very rich. Anyway, before they went with more straightforward location-based names, the NHL named conferences and divisions after influential figures. Smythe, Adams, Norris, and Patrick. Hart is the MVP trophy, of course. Hart is your answer here. 2,589 of you were like, duh, easy there. All right, so give me your early Hart predictions. McDavid is the early odds bet still in Vegas. What do you think? Let me know in the chat right now. We have three more questions left. So let's do this. Round 13. Which of these players was Alabama's last first round quarterback? Gino Toretta, Richard Todd, or Ken Stapler? There have been great quarterbacks from Bama. Joe Namath, Bart Starr, and Stabler were all Hall of Famers. Gino won the Heisman, but they haven't had a quarterback go round one since Rich Todd in 1976. Mm -hmm. Richard Todd is your answer. 1,244 of you getting that one right. Gab's given me the... Mm. Not, not quite, but it's it's there. Over 2,000 of you said Ken Stabler. Um, what do you think? Could this be the year they break that streak in Tua? Or do you think everyone's going with Burrow? I have so many questions for you today. So if you're out of the game, keep answering. But if you're in the game, we got two left, so let's go. Round 14. Out of all players born in the 90s, who has the most hits? Jose Altuve, Starling Castro, or Bryce Harper? Yeah, they're all born in the 90s. Just me. Just me. This one isn't even that close, though. It's Starling Castro at 29, who still has about 50 hits on Altuve. Yes, Starling came up at 20, never walks. All he does is hit, 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 no matter what. Starling Castro is your answer. 1,421 of you getting that one right. He's not the only one that hits, hits, hits. 1,421 of you have been doing nothing but serving me hit after hit, jab, cross, right hook, double cross, tie bow move, Barry Bonds style. Not Barry Bonds, Barry Banks. You know what I mean. I'm still saying it wrong. Billy Banks. Ah, we're down to the final round. It all comes down to this. Final round. I will get it right. And if you get it right, then that means you win. Round 15. Which one of these players has not averaged a 30-point triple-double over a 10-game span? Luka Doncic, Russell Westbrook, or James Harden? Only five players have done this. Westbrook, Michael Jordan, LeBron, Oscar Robertson, and as of this year, that fifth, Luka Doncic, meaning James Harden, is your final answer here at round 15. And we have 1,296 new HQ Sports MVPs. Congratulations. And 296 winners. Give me that double time right here. 77 cents is the prize tonight. I like it. So close to a dollar. Congratulations. All your hard work paid off tonight. All right. Who do we got? DVR. 777. Oh my gosh. It's a baby and a pumpkin. What's not to love? Phil Villa Real. 77 cents is coming your way. Look at that smile. That is the smile of a winner. Screener, 77 cents is coming your way. You know what you're doing there? You're being a, a great sunscreener. He's got the hat. He's got the shades. UV protection at its finest. That's really important. And Timothy Wa, 77 cents is coming to your cute cat. Choose to use it on that cat buy some treats what a game congrats to all of our new mvps when i see you next time can you believe this 
we'll know what the Super Bowl matchup is going to be. I can't believe this season is almost over. I'm so not ready for it. So come back on Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We can relish in the final football moments together. I'm Lauren Gambino. I've already made like OBJ and gave out money tonight. Ooh, I just hope that none of you were in college. Well, until next time, remember to hydrate, focus, and keep your head in the game. Billy Bank style!